Praise the Lord, saints. I really appreciate the opportunity to thank God for Brother Whitey, and especially Brother Terrell. This has been where I've been seeing some of the greatest miracles I've ever seen on the face of the earth to me. And I thank God for that. I remember the first trip I went to Africa when I saw this young boy's leg just grow out. And there was a demon possessed man. I shouted, I want to see. <laughs> and I went to take a picture of him, video. But when the power hit the boy, his leg grew out, the demon just hit. And I said, Oh my God. Yes, then I started seeing the greatest miracles of people just, just untwisting. And I was no help for nobody. I didn't help nobody at all. I couldn't help. I just got down on my knees and repented. Say, Jesus, I need to be saved. Help me, Lord. Because this is what I want. And I don't have that. I, I seem, you know, it just done something to me. And then Brother Joe decided to leave early. And, and it looked like I tried to get on the plane. I just fell down to get the plane. I had the seats. And Brother Terrell got on and Brother Tony, they left. And, but then the next day, me and Brother Taylor got to Africa, I mean, South Africa, and I couldn't get on the plane. And I tried for two to three days to get on the plane. They wouldn't let me on. They had a ticket. They said, fool. I said, it's not fool. And I just started praying in the middle of the lot. I didn't care. I wanted to go home. I'm being honest. I just wanted to go. I was in a country. I didn't know nothing. My first trip. But then I remember, you know, Brother Taylor always talked about a revival breaking forth in Africa, and then Mexico, and then it's America's time. And all of a sudden I said, Lord, there's something you want to do and tell me. So I just forget it. I just submit my ways. As soon as I said that a South African policeman walked up to me, he said, I see you carrying your bags around the airport and are you okay? And I thought about it, I said, everybody in the airport carries a bag, you know, we all carry bags. And I just told him my situation. And I, he said, I said, yeah, there's a coffee shop that I need that I can sit there overnight and maybe I can catch the flight out the next day. I said, I'm not going to go to a hotel or stay overnight. He said, you need to go to the second floor to the, I think it's called the coffee bean or whatever it is, he said, and wait. Just like that. I said, okay, I didn't think nothing about it. So I went up there, and about 12 o'clock that night, a little boy, a little man walked in. He didn't look like he was nothing. He carried a plastic bag, clothes in it, wrapped up, tied up, he had a suitcase tied up with ropes. And he pushed it to the door, and he sat there, and the Lord spoke to me and told me I wanted to talk to him for a minute, and I sat. And I said, oh Lord, no, I didn't know what, I'm in the country, I'm just being honest, I'm just telling the truth of how I felt. And, and about 4 o'clock that morning, I had Brother Terrell's bag, I couldn't go to sleep, I couldn't go on the plane, I wouldn't want to sleep with his bag, so I'm going to take it. And I'm just being honest, man. And all of a sudden, I went to the door to walk out at 4 o'clock in the morning, this man stood up. I said, okay, Lord, here it is. I said, sir, how you doing? I said, the Lord told me to speak to you. He said, you're a minister. He said, yes, I am. He said, you're a minister too. And the Lord would have me to say this to you. That a great revival is going to break forth from the southern part of Africa. And this revival is going to speak the word. This revival is going to come to men that fast and pray and live holy and righteous before the Lord. He said, men like A.A. Allen. He started off, he said, John Lake. Hey, I, William Brennan, Jack Cole, he said, go come to me that will fast and pray and give themselves unto the Lord and they're righteous and holy. And then he said, this revival, they go come to people you see as on TV. And he named the preachers that he named, he said, but they don't preach the doctrines of the Lord Jesus Christ. But they don't live holy and righteous before the Lord. But this revival going to come to me and women that live holy and righteous before the Lord. And I, you know, it just done something to me. I said, okay. He said, I will come to you again. Oh, hallelujah. I didn't know who the man was. And I said, the servant never said it to stay Do you need any food? He said, no. I'm okay. He looked at me dead in the face and reached back. I'm with him. This is my friend, and we're together. And he pointed out, looked up at the same policeman that sent me up there. And he was laughing and smiling, laughing, but just smiling with a great smile. And I said, oh, my God. I said, oh, Lord, if he's ain't too strong, I don't know. I said, Lord, I don't know. Oh, I know I told Brother Chase.
We got to pray for it. We can't just get to go. We know we got to fight for it. I said, Lord, I'm going to fight. I'm going to do whatever it takes if it takes prayer. I'm going to pray. If it takes giving up everything, I'm going to give up everything. It's about soul to me. I thank Jesus for a man that will preach the truth. I thank Jesus for the sacrifice that he makes. I thank Jesus. 